Welcome to another Impossible Shot. Today we're going to look at how to create a seamless performance even if your talent has no idea what they're going to say. So without a teleprompter, you can create a compelling performance and make the person look like a natural. Let's see how it's done. So what's the big deal here? Well, take a look at how the original video was recorded in one take. Welcome to another, Im Welcome to another Impossible Shot. Today we're going to take a look Today, we're going to take a look at how to do... Today, we're going to look... Now, let's see how we edited that and turned it into a single piece with seamless transitions. We're going to use an amazing secret weapon application called Descript to do this. You can download this. You can actually get several hours of transcription free before you have to pay for it. And then it's really only about... 10 bucks a month or so. So it's a pretty amazing deal. What it allows us to do is take any kind of video or audio source and it's going to automatically transcribe it for us. And once that's done, we can then use a text editor to actually edit the audio. So we'll drag our video clip in, choose transcribe audio, and then select automatic transcription. And away it goes. And then in just a few minutes, or even a few seconds on a smaller video file, it's transcribed the audio into text with a high degree of accuracy. Now there'll still be mistakes, but this could be used as an SRT file with a little bit of cleanup. What we're interested in today is the editing capabilities. So just like Microsoft Word or any other text editor, we can drag select parts of the text we don't want and just hit delete. And what Descript does is it will automatically add a crossfade between the tail of the previous section and the head of the following section after the delete. We'll go ahead and trim this section here. Impossible shot. Today we're going to look at how to create a And then this final redundant section here, which gives us a complete tight radio edit. Welcome to another impossible shot. Today we're going to look at how to create a seamless performance even if your talent has no idea what they're going to say. So without a teleprompter, you can Now, create we have jump cuts galore, and, and that's where the next process. step of the process comes in. Let's see how it's done. So, Descript allows us to export an XML file that we can use to load into something like DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, or even Avid. We'll choose the Premiere Pro XML here, but we're actually going to use it with DaVinci Resolve. One option here is to check the file quality settings, and that allows you to export the original audio that you provided for Descript, and not the lower quality version that it generated for its transcription process. So you have to wait for that to download. Once it has, you can repeat the export process, and again, we're going to choose a Premiere Pro XML. We'll export with the media, and jump into DaVinci Resolve. In Resolve, we choose Import Timeline and Import AAF or XML. There it is. We select it, click Open. We can leave all these settings at the default, click OK. It's going to tell us that it couldn't find the clip. Now, we'll hunt it down. This is where we saved out the media. And we're still going to be told clips not found. We're going to click no. And you'll see in the warning here that it's actually telling us, but it couldn't reconcile the time code. And that's because the EDL and Resolve disagree on the hour marker. Sometimes time code is written with the first hour at 01, sometimes at 00. The easy fix is that we can go in and import the source video separate to the import timeline process. And then we can modify the clip attributes and get rid of that extra one hour at the front. Once we've done that, we can right click on the timeline and choose reconform from bins. And that's going to go ahead and look at the media in the bins. And we'll get a warning message. You can ignore that because it will have correctly then aligned the video and the audio. And you'll see we have exactly the same cut that we did inside of Descript. Welcome to another impossible shot. Today we're going to look at how to create a seamless performance even if you're But now we can see those jump cuts quite clearly and that's so a mess. A so no one's going to believe that's a single take right now. Now if you're going for that YouTube show where everything's a jump cut, you're fine. But if you're not, 
you want to use what's called a smooth cut. Now, in other applications, this might be called a fluid morph or some other similar name, but the idea is it actually morphs between the two clips and it disguises the jump cut. And so it actually looks like continuous pieces of footage. Today we're going to look at how to create a seamless performance. So this is actually pretty amazing, but you'll notice on the last two here as we step through that the hairline is just doing weird stuff because there was too much of a difference in the perspective. Now one trick is you can try and trim the transition point until it's not noticeable. So without a tele And here that rapid movement disguises so the transition pretty well. So without a tele you can also adjust whether it starts on the cut or ends on the cut or centers on the cut, which can give you a slightly better result and a better read with the audience. So with this particular one, unless the audience is really paying attention, we can probably give a sleight of hand and convince the audience that it's the head movement that's so dramatic, not the fact that there's a transition here. We can also change the mode. Sometimes the fast morph mode actually looks better. In this case, the better mode does look better. Now, let's try again with another transition. And in this one, you'll find that no matter what we do, we really cannot get this to read properly. There's too much distortion in the hairline, and there's also just too much distortion in the background. Now, we can try and slide the cut to create more of a J or an L cut, and see if we can find a better transition point for the cut. And let's go ahead and add a smooth cut again, see what that looks like. You can create a but on this particular one, no matter what we do, we can minimize the impact, but we can't remove the fact that there's clearly something going on here, and this isn't a natural transition. Now here with impossible shots, we don't like to leave you in the lurch. So we're gonna show you in a case like this, how you can actually go one step further and do a little bit of magic in the fusion page to even fix a stubborn problem like this. So what we're going to do is delete the transition, and then we're going to cut around the transition area to create kind of a separate section of the timeline. We'll then take one of the clips, move it up to another timeline layer, and extend out the in and the out points of the clips so that we actually have the header and the tail and we can create a custom transition. We can then select both clips, choose new fusion clip to collapse it into one single clip. And if we go to fusion now, we can see that we have our two overlapping clips, the A side and the B side clips. And I'll load one in each viewer here so you can see that. Sure enough, these are the two clips and we wanna do a transition, a cross dissolve between these, but we also wanna morph between the faces. Now we're gonna use a secret weapon that very few people know about, and that is we're going to hack the stereoscopic tool set in Fusion. Fusion has these amazing stereoscopic tools that back in the day of 2D to 3D conversion and lots of stereo movies actually had value, but the idea is that they work out the disparity between a left and a right eye view. Basically, they create a pixel map of where pixels have moved between the left and the right eye. And we're going to pretend to Fusion that our outgoing clip and our incoming clip are actually a left and a right eye view. And we're going to get it to make a right eye view out of our left eye and a left eye view out of our right eye. So first thing we need to do is add a disparity node. And we're going to pretend the outgoing clip is the left eye view. I'll hook it in there. And the incoming clip is the right eye view. Now we'll add another node called a new eye. Now we need to hook up the new eye node the same way, left to left and right to right. The new eye node synthesizes and basically warps one eye to move it to the other eye position. So it's a little squirrely, some of the controls, and can be a little mind bending, but basically for the application we're doing here, we want the forward vectors only to be in the right eye for the left section and only from the left eye in the right section. So you see if unchecked the other two. And in this case, we'll swap eyes. And what we can do is between frame 10 and 18 is where we really want the transition to happen. So at frame 10, we're gonna set these all the way to the right. And so you'll see what we're doing there is we are only starting with the 
incoming clip. So we're starting with the incoming clip. We're going to set keyframes for that. And let's go to frame 18 and let's warp the incoming clip into the position of the outgoing clip. And that's what this does. We're going to say we want eye views from the other direction. And so now you see we're using the uh, incoming clip material, but we're positioning it and we're warping it to look like the outgoing clip. So they're very similar, uh, but they are subtly different. That's the original outgoing, and this is our warped incoming to make it look like the outgoing. So that's good. And now if we just copy and paste that node, we can do the exact opposite. We can have the outgoing clip start off looking like it's warped into the position of the incoming clip and then unwarp it to its final state where it matches the original outgoing clip's position and shape. We also need to disable swap eyes on this one. So it's the opposite output eye. We'll set keyframes for that. So we're basically just doing the opposite keyframes to the other new eye that we first set up. Finally, we add a cross dissolve between the two. We'll also keyframe that to dissolve from one input to the other over the frames 10 to 18. So at frame 10, we're showing 100% outgoing clip. At frame 18, we're showing 100% incoming clip, and then we're cross-dissolving between those warped versions on the way through. And that's essentially what a morph is. Now, of course, we need to wire it back up to the media out node so it goes back to the timeline. And then let's take a look at it in the context of the edit. Once it's cached, you'll see it's actually pretty smooth. There is a problem with it, a pretty big one. And that is, if you look at the screen left background just above the head, it warps pretty radically. The disparity system really didn't know what to do with those pixels there. And so it's warping the background behind unnecessarily. Well, we could leave it there, but that would just be bad work. We're going to jump back into Fusion, and we'll add a clean plate of the background just to fix that up. So here in the Fusion page, we'll add a time stretcher node. And we're going to right click and remove the interpolation curve for the source time. And we're just going to set a frame hold at frame 10 because that's where our transition starts. And now you'll see we've frozen frame 10 as our clean plate. Now we add a roto tool, a polygon node. And we're going to rotoscope that one little problem area on the screen left side of the head. And once we've done that for frame 10, we can jump down to frame 18, or in this case, frame 17. We don't really need to do 18, seeing as we'll be back to the original source footage by then. And I'm going to enable my gain and gamma on screen adjustments, just so I can see the edge I'm rotoing a little bit better. Now that I've made the adjustment for frame 17, I'll just skim back through the rest of the shot and make sure the interpolation in between works. If it doesn't, I'll add some additional keyframes. Now we need to mat out the part of the clean plate we want to use. So we use a mat control node to that. We set it to combine alpha. And we enable pre-multiplication by checking that weirdly named post multiply image button. Finally, we add a merge node to merge this clean plate back over the original shot. And we're done. We'll turn off our viewer gamma and gain. We do need to make one little tweak. Because we set our keyframe for our roto at frame 17, we need to make sure this clean plate is turned off by frame 18. So we'll just go in and adjust the blend for the merge node. So from 17 to 18, the merge of the clean plate actually shuts off. With that all done and it working the Fusion page, let's go and look at it in the context of the cut. We'll wait for it to cache and then play back and you'll see it looks very convincing. A teleprompter, you can create... Now we could go back and tweak a, a couple of the other edits or even treat them the same, 
but you see now that we can do a pretty incredible job. One last thing, the stereoscopic nodes have left a little bit of the frame missing at the bottom. So let's just pop the fusion clip up and we'll just cross dissolve the original footage in underneath and that will replace the missing part of the very bottom of the frame. And that's it. Now we could do all kinds of additional tweaks or we could take some of those other transitions and give them the same fusion treatment. But you can see now we have a very convincing edit where it's gonna be hard for the casual observer to realize that this was actually multiple takes. Hope you guys enjoyed this impossible shot. Feel free to drop us a line if you have an impossible shot you want us to do. Thanks. And we'll see you next time.